Okay, good day. Wanted to talk about the test backlog and uh, make uh, kick off this particular conversation with uh, a comparison with uh, the newest happenings with the Spira team um, product from Inflectra. Um, so they moved on to version 5.0, and this is what it looks like. It's got a cleaner look. Um, and again, I'm looking at a directory structure which has my um, test backlog information. Um, clicking in on safe tracks, let's see as an example. Again, uh, really nice visual cues about uh, pass, fail, and block. Um, very helpful. Um, and then you, you're able to drill in from uh, any one of these. And let's see if we can uh, expand. Uh, that might be slightly buggy on their part, but we can kind of drill in on these tests and then see how these work out. So again, um, if I want to test a vertical within my company and these are a variety of different tests involved and I wanted to do a uh, beta test demo as an example, clicking on the beta test, um, you immediately see the three distinct aspects or components that I'm testing for um, my company. I can tell um, that these components, what their healths are, um, on a very quick overview. And then of course, I can drill in and uh, see, uh, let's see, go to the Intelligent Event Response, IER. And then in any one of these guys, I can see, as an example, um, uh, let's go into Alert Sharing as an example. And uh, that's the sequence diagram information. So um, just a quick, quick, um, sort of overview of uh, what, how, how the test backlog is handled there. Now let's go to no risk. Um, and I'm looking in no risk and there's certain things that immediately are not coming into play. Certain things are looking nice. Um, so I'm gonna, I want to take it from the top uh, coming hot off the press from my comparison with uh, the Spire Team product. Uh, so what I see straight away is, is how this backlog is linked uh, to the iteration uh, number. Um, now, normally I think that's a great thing, uh, but I don't like the fact that it's tied to that. So if I'm in iteration 33 and I want to run my test backlog um, in this iteration, um, it's not necessarily clear to me um, how I go about that. Do I go into risk mitigation, reassign stuff? Again, not very clear to me how I can populate um, the test backlog conducted um, in iteration 33 that ranged from the 12th of May to, uh, to the 25th. So that's that's kind of an example of uh, where I'm not sure that there's not it's not very intuitive to me uh, how this works. Um, and uh, I don't mind the fact that um, you know there's it's the, the backlog is tied in, uh, but the fact that it can't stand independently is what uh, troubles me a bit. Because uh, again, if you recall with Spire Team, I'm not I'm not hard link, so um, you know I can independently go into uh, any time I want uh, and then just kick off uh, all these tests. And uh, just execute them. You know what I mean? Just uh, just execute. Straight up execute, pass, fail, and then the house has the date on it, um, can put the release information. And that's another thing that seems to be not present. Um, so it looks like we still don't have any kind of folder structure. I have trouble just staring at the, the sequences. I'm not sure where the sequences necessarily belong um, and uh, it would have been really nice to uh, to have been able to have a folder structure where I can kind of make sense that okay this entire set of sequences belongs to a folder. Um, also what I would like to somehow get is the release information or the build number that I'm testing against. Um, that what I would think is very helpful um, and I know that there is there was some talk about uh, support for building in um, release planning and uh, build uh, testing 
and uh, but it would be nice to know how I can get that all linked up. Um, there were other things that I found that were uh, again not very intuitive. Uh, see if I could work through a couple of examples here. Um, all right, so here's an example. So, uh, it would be nice to have. So if there's one, two, three, four, five, I'm assuming these are, let's see, these are subcomponent tests, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe not. Again, not clear what this is. Um, yeah, so again, I'm not, I'm not particularly clear on on what this what's going on here when I when I drill down I would hope that if I drill into this and there's a number of test sets test steps associated with this particular sequence I would not only see it here in the pop out but possibly down here um, under functionality or something I'm not sure again I could be completely not understanding the design model or what the uh, developers intended when they were developing this, but what I am expressing is this um, lack of intuitiveness uh, in here. I, I'm not able to intu intuitively grasp, oh, I know what probably I need to do is go here or there. So that sort of um, is, again, very unclear. And it's kind of intimidating because I'm not sure if I can, you see how much easier it is for me to just switch here, run my tests, and then be done with it. You know what I mean? So what I'd like to do is, again, the notion would be that I have a sequence uh, diagram that's associated with, uh, um, you know, these tests. And when I, when I go into them, um, that I'm able to, you know, conduct these uh, test steps and, um, and then execute upon them. Um, and then pass or fail, be able to, and then I want to be able to show the health based on this, uh, on how the project's doing. If I want to show my manager, um, you know, how the IR demo is doing, I'd like to be able to just have a way of quickly showing um, how that is. So again, going back to no risk, um, yeah, I'm not sure how the, st I understand what these statuses represent. I mean, if I hover over, it tells you. By the way, one thing that might be nice is you you, you hide the uh, once you've selected one of these guys. Just when you stop hovering over, you just hide whichever one. So then it's much more readable uh, from the color code. Right now, it, it's it's really not very easy on the eyes to spot um, what the status is. Um, you know, and again, I. Again, it's not necessarily clear to me um, if there are t subtests and if they fail that the that the in, in the hierarchical order, um, how does that affect um, the overall progress of the backlog? So um, I mean, this is a wonderful beginning to the idea of a test backlog, but it seems to me um, uh, really inadequate for me to make the switch right now. It just much makes much more sense to very rapidly. Uh, go into the Spire Team product, go into the folder, you know, go ahead and grab um, whichever, com you know, component I need to test. If a manager walks up, I'll say, uh, yeah, our beta tests are not so hot right now. We're about 30% uh, of the way passing. We've got a whole number of blocks and, uh, you know, and a lot of fail and cautions. Um, so we definitely need to improve. Um, what, what's going on and they can say well what specifically in the beta test isn't doing so well and I can say the IER component is not doing too hot the mobile the, the mobile app uh, portion uh, component of the beta test is doing somewhat better close to about 55 60 percent in good health and that our hardware tracker is uh, it's in it's in really bad shape um, there's a lot of uh, areas that are blocked on it so you know, again, there are 13 particular flows I tested in the mobile app. There were 10 flows I tested um, in the IER and in the tracker. There were four things I was tracking um, under charging and operation. And under operation, uh, what we found was the help button just doesn't work. 
Uh, the battery levels are, you know, sometimes accurate, sometimes inaccurate, uh, but happily, uh, the tracker does smoke t pass the smoke test and it powers up every single time. So I, I still like how the, the Spira Team product helps me fluidly plug right into um, you know, my workflow here at work and immediately provide intuitive uh, sort of responses um, and uh, reports to my managers. Uh, I don't quite see that happening yet with the no risk. Um, a lot of this to me is like, well, I think some of these flows belong to something else. Some of these flows belong to something else. The lack of categorization is frustrating. Um, and uh, so I, what I'm really looking for is somewhat of a resemblance uh, to the way the Spire Team product uh, manages this. And so that's my initial response. Um, again, it, it's to me the, the big uh, culprits, um, the lack of uh, folder hierarchies, the lack of assignment to builds and releases, the, um, the kind of readability issues with the health. Uh, and again, I'm not sure if, uh, if there's you know four or five tests associated with this flow, you know, how is it that I'm, uh, I'm reflecting that? Okay, so here's an example. These are bugs that were created uh, for that flow. So this, is, this almost looks like we're copying over a lot of the risk mitigation. Um, and some of it may be valid, but I think that the test backlog is not identical to the idea of risk mitigation exactly. So, um, you know, again, if, if I have um, uh, a number of steps that I, I want to test, uh, I'd like to be able to see you know how I how I have conducted those steps. I don't necessarily see that intuitively here. Uh, okay, and then I I want to do a, a a pass or fill on those steps, and then reflect the risk uh, RPN based on the pass fail that's happening as well. Uh, maybe maybe that's further down the road. Um, these are just um, thoughts coming out of the stream of consciousness. Um, just a lot of um, visceral and immediate direct. Um, responses to just having the experience and uh, I, unfortunately I think I'll still need to hold on to the Spire Team product uh, who've really cleaned up quite a bit on their UI it looks like um, and uh, and again it's very clean and intuitive um, and I need that from no risk as well so I hope Kurt, this uh, provides you some uh, workable um, feedback and helpful and valuable in, in, in many some ways to to make the product uh, no risk a lot better. Um, I'll look forward to continuing this dialogue. Um, talk to you soon.